Welcome everybody. It is uh, 6 p.m. Saturday, December 12, which means it's time for this week's movie. It is Santa Claus, 1959 Mexican film, the one where Santa Claus beats the devil. You may have seen it on Mystery Science Theater in English. Well, tonight you're going to see it in the original Spanish. Hi, I'm Keith. I don't uh, I don't speak Spanish. Uh, I only understand a little bit of Spanish, so I'm going to be lost too. Carol, thank you for the donations. Ten dollars, that gets us to 35 for the day. Our goal is 100. Thank you so much, Carol. It's always good to see you. And uh, I'm glad you support what we're doing here. Um, I was telling people before, just before we got started, that I've been doing, I've been hosting these movies every Saturday for more than a year now, a week, a year and a week. Uh, so it's been a full year of Saturdays. I haven't missed one. I'm not planning on missing any. I haven't been sick the whole year either. Um, Ivory says, I speak a little Spanish. We'll try to offer some translations. Okay, well, we have a couple of regulars who are Spanish speakers. I uh, haven't been seeing them today. Uh, I think I've got the music a little bit loud. Okay. Uh, before we get started with the movie, I, I usually try to show... Uh, I try to find a cartoon or a short film from the same year... Uh, as as the movie, I've got something else I want to talk about first. Um, uh, I, I do have a short film I want to show you. Yeah, Carissa says I'm sure we can muddle through. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, the the only time we've shown a Spanish, well we've done we've done it twice. We've shown two Spanish films. One was Dracula, 1931, uh, Spanish version shot in uh, Mexico. It had subtitles. So that was not a problem. The other one was uh, El Santo versus the Martian Invasion, and uh, we—it was an action film. We really didn't need uh, translations. It was, uh, uh, you know, the, these Martians showed up. El Santo wrestled all of them, beat them. The end. Uh, yeah, that was a, that was a lot of fun. We had a couple of Spanish speakers who were watching at that time, and they were providing some translations. This movie, there's going to be a lot more talking. A lot of scenes where there's not action going on and a lot of talking, and I'm not going to know what what's going on, even though I've seen it in the, the English dub on Mystery Science Theater. We've got nine people uh, uh, in the stream now. Welcome, everybody. Those of you who are new here, say hello and let us know how you found us. Um, and I hope you enjoy what you're about to see. The, the thing I wanted to talk about first before I started showing films was that um, uh, I was just reading... Uh, I was just... Uh, reading the news uh, online before we started and uh, Charlie Pride died today Charlie Pride the uh, the country singer uh, the first uh, black person to have hits on the country charts uh, back in the 1960s he was 86 years old he died of COVID-19 he performed at the Country Music Awards on November 11 uh, exactly a month ago and then he died of COVID-19. He received a Willie Nelson Lifetime Achievement Award and then went home to Dallas and died. Uh, this disease is getting worse. It is not. Uh, it is still around. People are pretending or are, are thinking that it's getting better with all this talk of, of a vaccine. We're not going to be getting vaccinated anytime soon. Uh, they've only just finished trials. It's only just getting approved. A lot of other people are going to get vaccinated first. Rich people, politicians. <laughs> the rest of us are way down on the list. This disease is still uh, raging out of control, especially here in the States with the, the, the way our government has bungled this. So we can't relax. We need to stay, we need to stay sharp. I'm going to show you... Um, uh, I'm going to show you something that I remembered uh, that I that I remembered and I looked up immediately when I saw the name Charlie Pride in the news. This is something that uh, Charlie Pride did on the David Letterman show back in 1986 and I never forgot this. <laughs> together Harmon Killebrew night we ask you who some of your favorite entertainers were and in the category of music you selected whom 
Charlie Pride. Charlie Pride. And Charlie was going to be here on tonight's program, but because of the inclement weather here in the New York City area, he was unable to get his flight out of Dallas, Texas. However, he's still going to perform for us. I understand this is him on the phone? He actually, he actually was going to be here. That, that's no joke. Let me just see. Hello, Charlie? Yes, sir. Hey, this is Dave. How are you? Hello, Dave. Uh, nice to talk with you. Uh, let me put Harmon on for a second. Okay, I was uh, watching you last night. Yeah, put him on. Okay. Charlie? Yeah? Well, I'm sorry you're not able to be here. Yeah, Harmon. Uh, I tell you, uh, when, you know, I was very pleased to be. I, wish, I would love to be there, but uh, I want to say right off that uh, congratulations. I watched the old-timers game, and uh, you still got the stroke. <laughs> well, I know you still got it. Ask him, ask him to sing. I'm going to ask you to sing a song for us, Charlie, if you will. Uh, okay, I'll would be you glad sing, to. Would you sing uh, Mountain of Love for us? Mountain I'll of Love. I'll be glad to. It's the first time I ever tried to do something like this, but I'll, I'll give it a whirl. All right. Okay. Thank All right. you. All right. Thank you very much, Charlie. Okay, Charlie, we'll just put the phone down here, and Paul and the band are ready. Okay. Okay, good luck to all of us. Thank you. <laughs> good luck to all of us. <laughs> I'm going to turn down the volume a bit and uh, talk while the song plays because it'll, be, uh, it'll be a copyright problem. But this, I saw this when it happened back in 1986 and I never forgot it. This has never left my head. This is so strange. I, I don't know who the hell that is. I think that's one of Harmon Killebrew's fellow baseball players. Harmon Killebrew was a, a baseball player who had just received a, an award or something. He was just, uh, maybe he was inducted in the Hall of Fame, but David Letterman... Uh, that night had a show all about Harmon Killebrew. Um, I'm going to read. Uh, well, did I close my? Uh, yeah, it looks like I closed my my stupid uh, my browser. Uh, I'm going to have to open up uh, Wikipedia here again. Charlie Pride. I, I've never been a country music fan, but I grew up in the country. I grew up deep East Texas near the Louisiana border, and country music was all around. Charlie Pride, Charlie Pride was one of those voices that that I always heard growing up, and I always liked Charlie Pride's voice. There's a there was a purity about his voice that you're hearing it you're hearing it now, even though he's singing over the phone. Uh. And Mountain of Love was one of my favorite songs. This, uh, I'll read to you a little bit on uh, Wikipedia here. It says, uh, his greatest musical success came in the early to mid 70s when he was the best selling performer for RCA Records since Elvis. During the peak years of his recording career, 66 to 87, he garnered 52 top 10 hits, 52 top 10 hits, 30 of which made it to number one. That's astonishing. Yeah. Very nice. Charlie. Very nice job, Charlie. Thank you very much. I'm well, sorry I'm you couldn't be here in person, but you sounded terrific. Thank you so much. All right, come back and see us for real one time. Well, listen, I'll have a record out pretty soon. Have me back when I get my record out. All right, we'll do it, Charlie. Thanks again. Thank you, Nabi. Say goodnight to Harmon. I will. Okay. Good night, Harmon. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> we'll be right back, folks. <laughs> That's uh, an example of why I watched the David Letterman show um, back in the, the 1980s uh, when I was in high school and college. I, uh, I never missed the show. I, I watched every single night. It was, it, the show was on every weekday night. I never missed it. I never missed the Letterman show back in the 1980s. Um, uh, and uh, that's an example of... Uh, Charlie Pride's uh, singing there. Yeah, Carol, uh, I loved uh, the Letterman show back in the day. After, in the late 80s and in the 90s when he moved to CBS, I had, uh, it wasn't as, as interesting for me. I'd lost most of my interest in it by that time. But anyway, um, yeah, Charlie Pride, again, he died today of COVID-19. Um, just one month ago, uh, he was presented with the Willie Nelson Lifetime Achievement Award at the Country Music 
at the Country Music Awards, uh, where he performed live at the age of 86. And then here we are a month later, and he has died of COVID-19. Please, uh, please keep in mind that this disease is still around. It is not getting better. It is getting worse. Um, we have had such poor leadership uh, in this country. Uh, and the uh, all the traveling that... Uh, that we are doing here in America during during these holidays is making things so much worse. And all this talk of uh, vaccines that are coming, it's not going to be soon. Uh, we've still got, I, I would imagine, another year of this. So please, uh, please uh, stay isolated as much as you can. Wear your masks, and uh, uh, and keep your relatives and your friends from traveling as as best you can. All right, um, let's get on with it. Uh, the uh, um, the the movie tonight is, of course, going to be uh, Santa Claus, nineteen fifty nine Mexican film in Spanish. Uh, I usually try to find a cartoon or a short film from the same year as the film. Um, this time. Uh, yeah, Iris says Santa Claus likely doesn't have such a deep plot that we need to follow it. But honestly, the way I remember it, this Santa Claus movie does have a lot of talking in it. Uh, uh, it's not the action film that that uh, El Santo was. The, there's going to be a lot of a lot of talking scenes, and we're just going to be like, what, what did he say? What? Um, uh, we uh, Instead of a film from 1959, when I saw that this was from 1959, I remembered a film from 1960 uh, that I grew up with. I used to see this film uh, in school all the time, and uh, it's become somewhat of a uh, pop culture meme. Uh, it's called um, Lunchroom Manners from Cornet Films, 1960. Let's watch. This should look familiar to everybody. When uh, Pee Wee Herman... When Pee Wee Herman used this as part of his stand-up act in the 80s, I was like, I Just remember before this. Before lunch one day, a puppet show was put on at school. It was called Mr. Bungle Goes to Lunch. <laughs> it was fun to watch. In the puppet show, Mr. Bungle came to the boys' room on his way to lunch. <laughs> he looked at his hands. His hands were dirty. And his hair was messy. But Mr. Bungle didn't stop to wash his hands or comb his hair. Mm. He went right to lunch. He's not wearing his mask either. Yeah, laugh it up, kids. Then, instead of getting into line at the lunchroom, Mr. Bungle pushed everyone aside and went right to the front. Even though this made the it's children laugh, comedy. no one thought that was a fair thing to do. Then, in the lunchroom, Mr. Bungle <laughs> was so clumsy and impolite that he knocked over everything, and no one wanted to sit next to him. And when he finally knocked his own tray off the table, that was the end of the puppet show. The children knew Yay. that even though Mr. Bungle was funny to watch, he wouldn't be much fun to eat with. Phil knew that a Mr. Bungle wouldn't have many friends. He wouldn't want to be like Mr. Bungle. Later, Miss Brown said it was time for the children who ate in the cafeteria to go to lunch. She hoped there weren't any Mr. Bungles in this room. <laughs> she hopes there aren't any Mr. Bungles. Uh, Bill stopped to return a book to Miss Brown while his friends went on to the lunchroom. Look these propaganda signs on the wall. says, do you know Mr. Bungle? They're encouraging kids to, to rat On each other out. On his way to catch up with his friends, Phil almost walked past the boys' room. But he stopped and thought. Were his hands clean? No. No, they were a little dirty. Phil remembered that Mr. Bungle didn't wash his hands. Mr. Bungle's hair was messy, too. <laughs> Phil didn't want to be like Mr. Bungle. <laughs> the director's Inside telling him, look at your room, hair, look Phil at your hair. You can't, you can't do it. his friends washing their hands, too. <laughs> Phil washed his hands well with lots of soap. Good Lord. 
Then he rinsed <laughs> the soap off. Phil dried his hands well, too. When he was finished, he threw the paper towel in the basket where it belonged. And then he made sure that his hair looked neat. God, he doesn't have any hair. Now, Phil and his friends were ready for lunch. Social programming. There was a line of children waiting to get into the lunchroom when Phil got there. He saw some boys he knew at the front of the line. They waved for him to go up to the front with them. But Phil didn't want to break into line as Mr. Bungle did. So Phil went to the end. That was the fair thing to do. He would see his other friends inside the lunchroom. The line moved very fast, and soon Phil was inside. First he picked up his tray. Yeah, yeah. Then he got his silverware. He put his knife, fork, and spoon neatly on the tray. He's narrating every moment of the and day. And then he slid his tray along. He always enjoyed looking at the good food in the cafeteria. You, it you remember? Good you remember how the good for school cafeteria food. smelled? Instead of and having a sandwich, to, today, how it sounded. Phil decided to yeah. take the hot lunch. Hot lunch. Mm. He Phil knows what else he wanted. Bread and butter too. And Phil knows and what else he, he wants. what else he wanted. Mm. Milk. But Alice took <laughs> the last carton on the tray. Maybe there was Damn, more milk. Alice. So he said, "May I please have some milk?" Phil remembered to say, "May I?" and "Please." That was very polite. Yes, there was more milk. Was it just was it just me and my experience, or, or was the milk always say, off? Thank you. When he took the carton of milk, Phil had good manners. He didn't want to be like Mr. Bungle in no, the lunchroom. He doesn't want to be like Mr. Bungle. Phil didn't want to forget his dessert. <laughs> the cake looked delicious. I don't remember having that much cake. <laughs> At the end of the line, the lunchroom supervisor said she had noticed how polite <laughs> Phil was, and she smiled at him. She wouldn't smile at a Mr. Bungle. Phil went to the table she where his friends were. A Mr. Bungle. He put his tray down carefully, <laughs> pulled out his chair quietly, and sat down. He knew his friends wouldn't like a noisy Mr. Bungle at that, their that, table. That piece of meat. That, that there was someone Phil liked, Freddy. Just one he slice of meat by his itself. From home. It looked good. Not even a sandwich. Freddy that... had a sandwich, an apple, a cookie. Yeah, Freddy has milk. a sandwich. Before Phil began to eat, he always put a napkin on his lap. <laughs> so did Freddy. Everyone liked Freddy. He was very polite. Freddy doesn't look For like example, he's enjoying lunch. If he had food in his mouth when someone talked to him, he always took time to chew the food with his mouth closed and swallow before he answered. Yeah, people got tired of waiting on him. Phil noticed how straight and tall Freddy usually sat. <laughs> Freddy kept his feet on the floor, too. I think you're studying Freddy a little bit too much. Phil would rather be like Freddy than like Mr. Bungle. Another polite person everyone liked was Alice. For example, when Alice sneezed, she covered her mouth and nose. This protected her friends at the table from any germs. Mm. While Phil and his friends ate, a boy ran past their table. You shouldn't run in the lunchroom. Only Mr. Bungle Only would Mr. do that. Only Mr. Bungle would do that. <laughs> Phil and his friends wouldn't like to have a Mr. Bungle at their table. Then lunchtime wouldn't be as much fun as it is. Fun? Phil ate slowly and enjoyed his lunch. Yeah, this looks like fun. Finally, he had eaten everything except his dessert. He saved his cake for last. Only a Mr. Bungle would eat his dessert before he <laughs> finished the rest of his Only lunch. Only a Mr. Bungle and Phil wasn't would Mr. eat Bungle. his cake first. The cake was good. <laughs> The cake was good. Mm. Phil drank his milk carefully. Some children are messy when they drink milk. But you remember? Not Phil. You remember pushing down on the top of the carton? How the milk As would fly of out of the straw. As finished, they didn't leave the table, but waited for all the others to finish eating too. <clears throat> Phil was the last one done. He wiped his mouth and hands carefully with his napkin. Then he cleaned the table where he sat. He didn't want to leave his place at the table dirty. 
everyone at the table cleaned his own place well. But look at that table. It was left very messy. Phil thought a Mr. Bungle must have sat there. Yeah, what a bunch of a-holes over there. But Phil didn't want to be like Mr. Bungle. Mm -mm. So he put his chair neatly into place. And his table looked fine. Not a piece of paper or scrap of food was left on it. Long, no slow Mr. Pan. Bungle sat here. <laughs> no Mr. Bungle sat Phil's here. Phil's friends were careful to put their waste papers and empty milk cartons where they belonged. In this way, they helped keep the lunchroom clean. Phil was certain that Mr. Bungle wouldn't put his paper in the waste basket and his empty carton on the milk tray. Mr. Bungle probably wouldn't bother to put his lunch tray in the right place either, but Phil and his friends did. <laughs> Mr. Bungle is a puppet. Lunch was good today. And then Miss Brown told Phil and his friends how proud she was Are of them. Are you a puppet, Phil? They had left their table the neatest in the lunchroom. No one here was a Mr. Bungle, <laughs> and no one wanted to be. Are you like Mr. Bungle? Mr. Bungle is a shame because he spoils lunchtime. Don't be like Mr. Bungle. Have good lunchtime manners, <laughs> and lunch will be more fun for everyone. Hey, that's the most unrealistic part of the film right there. Let's see, Mr. Bungle, where he says that Mr. Bungle is ashamed. I don't, I don't believe that. I don't think that Mr. Bungle feels shame. Yeah, I, I, I reject that notion. Um, I used to tell everyone that, uh, you know, uh, 20 years ago or so, there was a, 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 a musical band, like a punk band or something. I don't know what they were. I've never heard their music, but there was a band called Mr. Bungle. And whenever I would mention Mr. Bungle, people would think I was talking about this band that I didn't know anything about. And um, I would tell people that, um, no, 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 the original Mr. Bungle comes from this Lunchroom Manners film, this, this coronet film by uh, Alan Ross in 1960. That's the original Mr. Bungle. Well, I discovered this week, no, this is not the original Mr. Bungle. I discovered, I discovered some uh, children's programming from five, maybe even ten years earlier. Like 1950, 1955, there's a, a character named Mr. Bungle. We'll get around to that on Bad Saturday Morning uh, someday. It's a show that I've had in my mind uh, to to research for some time, and I finally I finally started looking it up online and finding and found some episodes. And there's a Mr. Bungle. I'm like, what? Um, okay, so I'm learning too. I'm learning too. Carissa says, dang. <laughs> what are you saying dang about Cause, was, that there was another Mr. Bungle uh, earlier anyway we're going to watch Santa Claus here more Mr. Bungle yeah um, we're going to watch Santa Claus 1959 made in Mexico um, but uh, before we get to that we're at $35 of our uh, weekly goal uh, of 100 the uh, PayPal donation is on screen here the uh, link comes up in the Twitch chat every five minutes or so. Please donate what you can. Try to get us to $100 or, or closer to it. We're at $35 right now, thanks to uh, thanks to Carol and Ivory and uh, Carissa and uh, Miranda. Where is Miranda, by the way? Uh, Ivory says, that was my era. We saw many movies like this in elementary school in the 50s. We thought they were laughable. Yeah, same here. Like I was saying, I grew up seeing that on the... That lunchroom manners film on the on the projector in in the cafetorium when I was a kid we saw it many many times. Um, uh, Carissa says, "Well, if he takes after Punch from Prince and Judy, he's, he's going to be a real a hole." Yeah, there's the link, uh, the Twitch link to the uh, uh, the donation link just came up in the Twitch chat there. Uh, please donate what you can. Let's get started with the Santa Claus movie. I don't know much of anything about it. Um. The, the poster I've got here is from the American distribution. It says uh, K. Gordon Murray presents. K. Gor Gordon Murray was famous for distributing these rock-bottom bad movies uh, uh, aimed at uh, children. Um, but the, uh, the Mexican version that I'm about to show you doesn't mention K. Gordon Murray. Obviously, he put his name on it when he distributed it in the U.S., but... Uh, 
Um, you know, Ivory says if a boy put his napkin on his lap in the lunchroom, he wouldn't have made it through recess. Right. Yeah, it was laughable. Um, <laughs> all right. And like I was saying, when I saw the uh, when I saw the the Mr. Bungle film show up in the Pee Wee Herman's stand up act in the 80s, I was like, I know this. I, yeah, I, I know this film. I grew up with this. Um people a lot of people still haven't seen it it's, it's it's still worth showing and it's still hilarious um it, it's, i've seen it many times now but it's been it's been a while since i've shown it it's been a good long time since i've shown it all right let's get on with santa claus from mexico 1959 not that here we go Santa Claus. La Nina Pobre, played by Lupita. La Nina Pobre, the poor little girl. I know that much. Noche de Paz, public domain. Jingle Bells, public domain. I, I was able to read that much. They actually listed the, the songs and listed them as public domain. Hmm. But you'll notice, even though, he's, even though they've listed Silent Night as public domain, Santa Claus still doesn't actually sing it. You'll see right at the beginning here. Mexican ideas about Santa Claus are quite different than the, uh, the USA ideas about Santa Claus. Mexiscope. <laughs> Filmed in Mexiscope. <laughs> Directed by Rene Cardona. Allá, muy lejos y muy cerca del cielo, En un hermoso palacio de oro y cristal vive el buen viejo Santa Claus que algunos conocen como Papá Noel y que no es otro que San Nicolás de Bari, el gran amigo de los niños. Pero vamos a acercarnos para conocerlo mejor. ¿Quieren ustedes acompañarnos? Santa Claus lives in a castle in heaven. That angel is on a spring. Bouncing up and down. What a great picture. Ah, Look at the great color. El tiempo vuela y hay que terminar todos los juguetes para los niños de la tierra. Con el perdón de ustedes, pero los niños All the children of earth. See, he, he's not singing the words. This is weird. Oh God. Africa. <laughs> the, the, the whole continent. Is they, they supposed to be from Italy? China. Oh boy. Hmm. 
You can order these nifty uh, coffee mugs, by the way, at the links in the Twitch chat. I, I do have to say this movie got right to the weirdness. No, Dr. Dweeb, there doesn't appear to be any cultural revolution going on in that particular, uh, that particular corner of China. Santa's really getting into the groove there. Japan. Is this weird um, Santa's castle in heaven has a bizarre Turkish look to it uh, great work kid the Orient is this Iran <laughs> Oh yeah, let's let's get an eight-year-old belly dancer. <laughs> Russia. trying to demonstrate Darth Wing, I think they're trying to demonstrate that Santa Claus is not racist. So he's including all the children of the world. Alemania. Al Alemania? Was this Austria? Well, don't get too excited, kids. Cuckoo clock they're singing about. Oh no, this is Italy. What 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 did I see before? Some kids somewhere are really singing because these kids aren't. Yeah, this is a long segment, Carissa. South America. This is actually a good groove here. <laughs> this is going to have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Central America. Dr. Dweeb says at least they're not speaking Wookiee like last week. I wish they were speaking Wookiee, actually. Ah, finally. Good old USA. Pathetic. Cut! Cut! 
they couldn't shoot that again? Ah, uh, Mexico, finally. Yeah, this is awfully long. Okay, this kid is overdoing it. We we are coming up on ten minutes into the film, and this is all we've seen so far. What's so funny? They summoned they summoned the the devil. Oh <laughs> Interpretive dance in hell. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of them. Yeah, Darthwing, that's a good question. Where's Doom Guy? Diablo Menor. A minor demon called him. See, no, don't make me fight Santa Claus. See, I'm only catching an occasional word here. I, I don't. Está bien, jefe. So it's very good, chief. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Good lord Muchos niños nightmare de ilusiones esperan con ansia la llegada de la noche buena y eligen los juguetes que Santa Claus ha de traerles Este es un niño muy bueno y sus papás son ricos <laughs> Wow. Esta madre es muy pobre y esta es Lupita, su hija. Sueña con la muñeca que tanto le gustaría. La niña pobre, Lupita. Pobrecita. Stop shoving! Feliz Navidad. ¿Quiénes son estos tres niños que se meten entre la gente? Bien, bien, no parecen muy educados. There's Frida Kahlo back there. ¿Qué les estará diciendo? <laughs> the devil just pops up right in the middle, of, right in the middle of the crowd, literally shoulder to shoulder with people. 
Uh oh. Young tough kids. Three rocks. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Maldito Diablo. Evil demon. Yeah, that rock transcended space and time. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I, I, don't, I have no idea. So the magic telescope. I caught, I caught the words magic telescope. Oh, God. The, the mouth of something? I forgot how weird this is. <laughs> I, I I remember this this was weird, but I forgot exactly how weird this. <laughs> Santa Claus spying machine. Looking for a particular girl. Well, he needs to zoom in. <laughs> okay, so they they're looking for Lupita. Oh. Speaking of Punch and Judy, it's Punch and Punch. Yeah, it's Senior Bungle. <laughs> Oh, she's gonna shoplift. Bad Lupita. Okay, these these are the these are the evil crimes that this guy is reduced to to uh, dealing with. <laughs> Genocide. Nah. Little girl taken off with a doll. That that's. Yeah, Carissa, like in Bedazzle, the devil is cutting buttons off sweaters. Yeah. 
¡Ganamos! ¡Ganamos! Es muy fácil vencer al diablo. Solo se necesita un poco de bondad. Victory over the devil. <laughs> What was that rolling around on the floor? Did you see there was something? See, there's something, there's something rolling around on the floor. There's two of them. What is that? What, what was that? What are those? Yeah, those those little things walking around on the floor were freaking me out because they were walking. They weren't rolling. Okay. That's Santa Claus. He sees you when you're sleeping. I don't see them anymore. Yeah, you're probably right, Darthwing. They're probably robot toys. Aquí viene el niño rico. Qué sueño tan raro. Y esas cajas tan grandes. Niño rico, a rich boy. <laughs> he gets parents for Christmas. And one of them is uh is Nicolas Cage. Not a good deal. Oh, that's what he's dreaming for. Okay. Los sueños son muchas veces los deseos no cumplidos. Ese niño es muy rico. Tiene todo lo que quiere. Le basta con pedirlo. Lo único que quiere ese niño es el cariño de sus padres. ¿Qué no lo quiere? Tal vez sí. Tal vez no. Pronto lo vamos a averiguar. ¿Y la niña qué será lo que más desea? Si ya está dormida, podemos ver su sueño. Okay, Santa's frozen in place. Okay, now let's see what poor Lupita is dreaming. She's she's on top of a blanket. Just put the blanket over. Her. ¿Qué soñarán los niños, Lupe? Something about los niños. Aún recuerdo cuando yo lo era. A veces soñaba con ángeles. Con jardines llenos de flores. Con castillos de azúcar. Pero a veces también soñaba con el diablo. Maldito diablo. No deja tranquila a la niña. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Ahí está otra vez ese miserable. <laughs> Se va a meter en los sueños de la niña. Y ella soñará muy feo. Muy feo. <laughs> Veamos qué es lo que sucede. <laughs> overacting. Did he say feo? Did he say ugly? Is that what he said? It was evil breath, darn it. He's making her have uh, evil dreams. Oh, 
It's the Oompa Loompas. What do you get when you... I don't remember any of the words. <laughs> Do any of you all remember the Oompa Loompa song? Any of the Oompa Loompa songs? Oh god, look at their makeup. Look at their faces. Yeah, Carissa that would have given would have given you nightmares. Yeah, they've got like skulls. They're, they're... Painted on button eyes. This is a full on uh, dance number. I don't remember this. Do they have faces on the backs of their heads, too? They do. Yeah, this is nightmare fuel, all right. Fog, one of them's gonna kick Lupita. Yeah, oompa loompa doompa dee da. I do remember this part. They're telling her to, to steal the doll. She's saying no, stealing is wrong. Yeah, this is this is the part where Lupita just stonewalls the devil. <laughs> he, he gets absolutely nowhere. Pobre niña, pero me las va a pagar ese precio a cualquier precio. En cuanto baje a la tierra, nos vamos a ver las caras. Y los tres hermanos. Yeah, chew him out, Santa. Santa Claus. To the bat pole. Okay, what is this? Was it just the eyeball again? Yeah, just the eyeball. I'm barely awake, kids. Mm. 
Okay, Lupita's voice is coming out of that, that mouth hole in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what What's with the fog? Okay. Muchachitos, did he call them? Muchachitos? Little dudes? So these are the bad kids, huh? Santa Claus. Yo lo único que te pido es que mis papás estén conmigo en esta noche buena. No quiero estar solo. Pero lo más importante es que me traigas un hermanito. I think even if I understood Spanish, I don't think I would understand what this kid is saying. These kids don't want other people reading their reading their work. Okay, these these kids are in an orphanage. Pero, he wants a dog. Bicycle. I know when I made out Christmas lists, I was very particular about the about the make and model of every toy that I wanted. I was never just, you know, I never generically said a bicycle. <laughs> okay, okay, we get it. Oh! They have an incinerator right there in the office. Oh! And the letters fly up to heaven. I'll put them in the magic incinerator. That's it. No! <laughs> yeah, Santa Claus is, is a perv. <laughs> He's way too excited about this. <laughs> We're only 30 minutes into this. We have an hour more. I'm not going to make it. I, I don't think I'm going to make it. Querido Santa Claus, este año me he portado muy bien y he sido obediente y he estudiado mucho y por eso me atrevo Now, can a he read them all? He's magic. Un ferrocarril, un autobús, un camión, una pelota. This is Santa Claus we're talking about. He's in heaven. Soldaditos, soldaditos, cañones, for Christ's sake. Bicicletas, automóvil, patines, motonetas. Ooh. Ee. 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 Ee
I need to look at that up. Verdad surtas. That means truth supply. Or did I misspell that? Truth supply. Hmm. Ya se acerca la hora de bajar a la tierra, donde todos los niños me esperan. Y tan solo faltan unas horas para la noche. Carissa says, "Did he just grant someone a baby? <laughs> Maybe." Redoblemos el esfuerzo y acabemos de una vez. Apúrense. Okay, so all these kids he had singing before, they're his factory workers. All these kids from all over the world. Les presento al distraído mago Merlin. Merlin. His amigo Santa Claus. Mago <laughs> Merlin. Mago Merlin. Mago Merlin. idea what's going on. Yeah, Merlin. Is Merlin uh, traditionally associated with Santa Claus in Mexican culture, or did they make that up for this movie? I, I read something that's uh, I read something last week that I'm sure I've read before but I'd forgotten that the uh, Santa Claus conquers the Martians was the first time that uh, Mrs. Claus ever appeared on film so Mrs. Claus is a is a 20th century a late 20th century invention so uh, Santa Claus conquers the Martians broke ground in more ways than one. But what was he doing? Those giant flowers. This is the donation link that just came up in the Twitch chat. Please make donations. <laughs> we need to get to $100. We're at 35 What does he have in the cages there? He's wearing... Looks like he's wearing wooden, curly-toed shoes. Carissa says, I have to get a snack if there's an hour or more of it. Yeah, please, please do. I think I'm going to have to as well. No, those are mechanical butterflies. He's, is he brushing pixie dust off of them? What is he doing? Yes, <laughs> 
Ahora no se me olvidó. Se enfría con la llama azul de fuego helado y... Eso es todo. Que como ven, pues... Es muy fácil, ¿no? Ahora, dame tu bolsa. A ver. What? You just dumped that potion down Santa's pants? What? What? Dr. Dweeb, $10. Thank you. That gets us to $45. Almost half. Almost half of our $100 goal. I'm glad you're here, Dr. Dweeb. It's always good to see you every week. I, I wish I had a better movie for you right now, <laughs> but I, I don't. <laughs> this is, we're stuck with this. Okay, exploding flower gag. Oh, oh the, the disappearing flower. Okay, how do I turn visible again? Idiot Santa Claus. <laughs> One of these days, Merlin. <laughs> oh, no. It's Vulcan. It's Vulcan. Mi querido Yabón. La llave de oro abrelo todo. Está lista. Ahora te la doy. I made you a magic... A magic box. Whoa. I thought the box was huge, but no, it was just foreshortened. Verás que una obra de arte como esta, no hay otra igual. Magic key will open any door, I imagine. So he has a flower that turns him invisible and a key that will open any door. I don't think that's Thor. I think that's Vulcan. Yes, he's tried on that door. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there's another door. Y otra, todas se abren con la llave mágica. Ivory says, I think the butterfly dust in the pants was so he could fly. Okay. Oh, a keyhole shaped door. How convenient. Sala de entrenamiento. What? What is he doing? Oh. Oh. Okay. ¿Qué está haciendo? Bailando. No. Usa su línea. Está tan gordo que ya no cabe por las chimeneas. Gordo. He says that means fat. So this this was his uh yeah, this was his uh James Bond getting his uh Getting his super spy devices from Q. Oh, he, he has practice chimneys. <laughs> She's stupid. <laughs> She's stupid. Flaco <laughs> means skinny. Super Ranger Special. Wow. Trans Heavenly Airway. That was in English. There's four mechanical reindeer.
Yeah, <laughs> crash dummies, yeah. <laughs> Look, there's a robot in pieces up against the wall over there. You see that? Did he say Sputnik? He did say Sputnik. I think Sputnik had just gone, had just been sent up the year before, in 1958. <laughs> This kid is lecturing Santa Claus. So I'm, I'm catching the occasional individual word, but I have no idea. What... Who was laughing? Who was that laughing? Was that the narrator? That was weird. Oh, these are all the presents. What? Mickey Mouse? On a... <laughs> oh wow, badly dubbed Santa voice. Oh, that, oh, that's weird. That's... <laughs> and it's not even a good singing voice. Okay, there's lots of ukuleles. Uh, yeah, whatever. <sighs> La bolsa con los polvos de los sueños de Berlín, la flor de no te veo, la llave abre lo todo, el trineo, y ahora veamos cómo funcionan los regos. Okay, he's got all his stuff. Going through the checklist. No les gustaría tener un juguete así. A giant wind-up reindeer. This is going to take forever. Oh. I think here's our screenshot for the thumbnail. 
que en mi palacio de dulce y cristal haya paz. The Crystal Palace. El hijo de Dios está en la tierra. Jesus and God. Feliz Navidad. He said something about Jesus and God. Oh, oh, oh. Who lives in that other castle? Jesus, I guess? Is it over, maybe? No, it's not over. No, we've still got another... Uh, we're only halfway through. <laughs> yeah, we're at the halfway mark here. Um, Carissa. <laughs> I really like these retro views of Earth with no weather floating floating in a blue sky. Okay, kid. Mom and Dad are going out to party. Mom and Dad will come back nice and drunk at 2 a.m. Carissa says I will fight Santa for my cookies. Okay, now here's the bad kids. <laughs> Whatever he said. They're getting cold, says Darth Wing. When I was a kid, this is a story that I told some friends of mine last week. When I was a kid, our my parents and my grandparents told us, they didn't tell us that we would get a lump of coal. They told us that we would get a bundle of switches. Um, and see, when I was when I was a baby, we had a we had a train set. One of those old school 1950s train sets with the with the three metal rails on it, three hollow metal rails, and the uh, the control was a, a big black switch that would go thunk, thunk, thunk. You would turn the, the power on and off and it would hum real loud. It had a transformer in it. You would turn the train on and off with this, this switch. And we just called it the switch. So when, uh, when my grandmother told me that we would, that if we were bad, we wouldn't get presents, we would get a bundle of switches. I was like, what? I, I, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, Darthwing, that's what my grandmother meant, was, uh, yeah, a, a bundle of switches, like, like a, like, like little, uh, skinny branches off a tree that you whip a kid with. Uh, that's what she meant, but the only, the only switch that I knew was our, the, the switch on our train set. So when she told us we would get a bundle of switches, I was like, uh, what? I, I don't, I, I don't. Okay, we're missing this important heartfelt scene between poor Lupita and her mom. <laughs> So she looks up and he's like right there. <laughs> right, Carissa, different generations, different meanings. And that's the kind of thing that, you know, my parents and my grandmother, they had no idea that I was misunderstanding. They, they had no clue. So when you talk to kids, 
You have no idea what they're what they're misinterpreting, what they're not understanding. He wishes he was back in the inferno. He's wow, he's moseying along up there on the clouds. What happened to that Santa Claus we saw earlier today in, in the Christmas tree? The, the Santa Claus that was dispensing the magic lightning bolts. Oh, he's going to move the chimney so Santa Claus can't get into the house. Huh? Oh, my, my hemorrhoids. Ugh. Oh, what a dirty trick. Gotham City? What beef does the devil have with Santa? Well, Santa's, Santa's the good guy. Yeah, you're right. This seems inefficient. <laughs> Carissa, yeah. This is pretty slow. The, the, who is it that... that uh, People over the years have calculated how fast Santa would have to move to cover, to give presents to like a billion children all overnight. He would have to move at, at like the speed of light. Don't! This is the work of the devil. <laughs> Yeah, we adults. Um, yeah, how did he miss the giant hole where the chimney was? Carissa and Darthwing, I think we as adults overthink this. <laughs> I think children would have no trouble understanding. Oh, he moved the chimney. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> okay, that that was funny. <laughs> That's a big bundle. Is he gonna leave that entire bundle of toys with these kids? I'm leaning back. I'm, my back is tired. What are those drawings on their pajamas? chimney back Santa Claus, oye que el diablo Put vuelve a the poner chimney la chimney en su lugar back
Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Qué bueno. Eso te pasa por malo. <laughs> Qué bueno. <laughs> Santa has the, the devil outsmarted at every turn. Pero este diablo no es what the? Miren lo que contento. What the hell? Algo traerá bajo los cuernos que no debe ser muy bueno. You materialize in somebody's house just so you can dance around naked in front of their Christmas tree? Is this another chimney? Yeah, you're right, Dr. Weeb. With me, with me nodding off, Santa is putting me to sleep. I'll leave the camera running. You, you all might be able to spot him. Pero el diablo no se conforma y trama otra maldad. Okay. The devil is a mind comedian. <laughs> Red hot doorknob. Ahora a probarla. Está ardiendo. <laughs> yeah, Darth Wayne, he's home alone. Okay, listen, dumbass, he's behind you. Yeah, you're right, he, he, he tossed the burning paper behind him. Oh, this is going to be good. Going to pop a paper bag. Well, okay. Going to shoot him in the butt. <laughs> well, whatever makes you happy, Santa. Okay, we're at the two-thirds mark. We've got half an hour left. I'm, I'm looking at the clock. I'm just gonna play the piano. Can't stop yawning. This kid's hair, he looks like he's gonna grow up to to lead a really vicious punk band. I 
is behind me? <laughs> well, I guess I wouldn't see him. Excuse me. This might be fun if we had if we had a group of hosts that, that I could uh, that, that I could laugh along with. But I'm not I'm not making it. This isn't doing it for me. <laughs> see what he was doing. Boo! Yo sé que esos regalos no te hacen feliz. Pero haré por ti algo que solo hago con los niños que son muy buenos. Dejar que me veas de verdad. Y para eso, te echaré los polvos para que sueñes con los perros. Sueño. Does sueño mean sleep or does it mean dream? Yeah, boy, no snooches. Oh, he's he's gonna let the kids see him. <laughs> ah, mom. <laughs> oh wow. That's not what I expected. <laughs> Uh, this is a proper, obedient kid. You want to work at the castle in heaven? Ahora, vuelve a dormir de nuevo. Todo fue un sueño. Cuando despiertes, tal vez seas muy feliz. Donation link just came up in the Twitch chat, along with the link to our merchandise store. Please, please make donations. We're at uh, 45? Yeah, 45 for the night. We need to get to 100. I like this rich house where everything's painted white. Meanwhile, at the Rotary Club. Uh oh, roofies. Qué extraño cóctel es este. Es el cóctel del recuerdo. Oh, is this what the kid wished for? That his, his parents would turn into good people. And so Santa's in disguise, going to give them a. I'm going to give them a, a magic potion. Verde como la esperanza. Para que los enamorados no olviden su juramento de amor. El amor no es solo de los enamorados. Y es tanto más amor, cuanto más desinteresado. 
porque el verdadero amor, como la virtud, lleva en sí mismo la recompensa. Beban mi cóctel y se les hará presente el más grande amor de sus vidas. ¿Y el que no ama? No puede beber de este cóctel. El primer trago le quemaría la garganta. Bueno, ya que nosotros nos amamos, brindemos por el amor. Yep. Qué extraño mesero. No creo que fuera un simple mesero. Yep, Ese that. hombre me recordó a alguien. Su mirada dulce, su barba blanca. Alguien que conocí cuando era niño. Tonterías. Si lo hubieras conocido de niña así de viejo, ya estaría diez veces muerto. Hey, mom and dad were no never seen again. De pronto he sentido la necesidad de estar junto a él. Yo también. El pobrecito está tan solo. Estoy seguro que nos está necesitando. Vamos con él. Vamos. Let's get home, quick. Wait, so Santa was still in the house. So he was projecting? Yeah, Carissa, I think you're right. They wouldn't have needed much convincing to take a free cocktail. Estos que necesitan buenos consejos, es el diablo quien los aconseja. When are these kids going to actually do something evil? Yeah, that's what he wished for, Darth Wayne. Es mejor que uno se vaya detrás de aquel lavadero con una punta de lápiz. Cuando falle Santa Claus, vamos. Lo jalamos y al suelo va a dar. Juega, yo me voy. Ah. Yeah, rocks. They're wishing for rocks, Dr. Dweeb. Oh, they're gonna. They're, they've got a rope. They're gonna clothesline Santa. Dumb kids. No voy a dejarme. En la próxima casa me las va a pagar todas juntas. Yeah, I have no, no. idea what's going on. Yeah, incoming. Blaming each other. They should use it to heat the house. <laughs> Andale. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> oh, I like this leaning effect. Leaning around corners. They need to be using that more. Yeah, they need to be using that trick more. That, that, yeah, adios amigos. 
Okay, so the reindeer, the mechanical reindeer are hovering directly over this chimney. What is it with these chimneys that aren't on top of the buildings, that, that are just on balconies? Okay, the devil's gonna... He's gonna hotwire the sleigh. Ya! Se va a llevar el trineo de Santa Claus. Pero qué bueno. Los renos no lo obedecen. ¡Qué chasco! The reindeer are too smart for him. Oh, wow. He just pulls a knife. Malo, malo, malo. Malo, malo, malo. Evil, evil, evil. <laughs> <laughs> okay, knife fight time. Okay, we're in the home stretch. We've got about 15 minutes now. Maybe 20. Yeah, cut his bag. <laughs> yeah, Carissa, you're right. This is so inefficient. Oh, yeah, he's cutting the magic bag. Wouldn't the, wouldn't the reindeer have wound down? Oh, he's spitting the devil's eye. Oh, there goes the flower. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't the mechanical reindeer have wound down by this point? If, he, if he's just leaving them idling, floating above the... floating above the chimneys like that. You're right, Carissa. ¿En qué manos irá caer la flor de no te veo? Flor de no te veo, is that what he said? So the, the flower of not seeing? Did I hear that right? Little does Santa know. Miren a Santa Claus, tan tranquilo, cumpliendo su misión. <laughs> Dante. Oh, dog. Dante the dog. <laughs> Santa's like, what the hell? Oh, he's gonna pull out his his magic bag, but uh oh. This <laughs> is yeah, to climb a tree. That, that laugh sounded awfully similar to his mechanical reindeer. Finally, Santa and the devil are face to face. Toto al mundo, you'll miss the whole world. <laughs> evil, evil! <laughs> Oh, who, who's this? Oh, 
Time to make the donuts. Time to make the donuts. <laughs> okay, wow. Whatever he's saying to her is so dirty we weren't allowed to hear it. Ah, oh, Santa's... Santa's magic ear machine. No, oh, there's nobody in the control room. No. Someone's in the house. Oh wow, he's, he's waving a pistol around. Uh, Mexican comedy. No, you, you take the gun. I'm ha having an asthma attack. Whoa. Oh, that's a good trick. Okay, he's going to do the phone call trick again. Whoa! Incendio terrible, a terrible fire. Ah, we're back to Lupita. Yeah, we've only got 10 minutes or so. So Lupita is going to kick the devil's ass here. Where did Dad go? Merlin. 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 Calling for Merlin. I want to see more of those creepy robots walking around. <laughs> he found a shotgun. See, I wish I understood what the joke was there. Merlin, Merlin, Santa's in trouble. Uno, dos, tres. Uno, dos, tres. 
Did Billy fall down uh, the well again, Lassie? Que el único que vale aquí eres tú. Okay, Mexican John Carradine with the shotgun. Versus uh, Mexican Orson Welles with a pistol. <laughs> muy machos, muy machos. Such macho men, she says. Oh, the police. The police and the fire department are all looking for the devil. No, it's just a barking dog. <laughs> the devil is okay, deal with this old man. I need you to Berlin? place a lightning bolt right Berlin. here. Berlin. ¿Dónde estás? <laughs> ¿Dónde estás? Niña, Merlin, where are you? Santa confiscate his presence. The use of unnecessary violence and the apprehension of Santa Claus has been approved. Dr. Dweeb, was there an episode of Amazing Stories where they arrested Santa? I don't remember that one. You're talking about the the Spielberg series from the 80s? Or I heard there was a new Amazing Stories. Okay, you see, the opposite of white is black. The opposite of fire is cold. The opposite of dog... The opposite of dog is cat, so he's going to send Ngato, Ngato. <laughs> so I'm going to... You got a cat in that bag? Saying, let the cat out of that bag. Oh. Oh, God, that's, that's gross. Whoa. <clears throat> okay, but Santa still doesn't have his invisible flower. He still doesn't have his invisible flower and his uh, and his butterfly dust. Is that a doctor? Oh yeah, this. Oh, Nazis! What? No se ve nada. 
There's nothing. Okay, everybody in the neighborhood is outside in their pajamas on Christmas Eve. Oh! Shut up, Merlin. I don't have time for this. Ah. <laughs> oh, he saw the smoke. Ay. Ay. <laughs> Nada menos que en la oh. casa de nuestra amiga Lupita. Lupita's gonna have the superpowers. We're at the end here. What's what's gonna happen? There goes the the lightning bolt. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, Carissa, she can steal all the dolls she wants now. <laughs> yeah, she can steal all the dolls. <laughs> There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Oh, he was out scrounging for money and got nada. Or was he looking for a doll? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> Mama, vine a Santa Claus. Me dijo que me quería. Y que si alguien no platicaba más conmigo. What's, the, what's this? What's, what's she doing here? Me volvería a Nepolo. Hijita, sí. Pero ahora duérmete que ya es muy tarde. Sigue soñando esas cosas que son tan bonitas. Entonces todo fue un sueño, mamá. Tampoco es cierto que me dejó un muñeco en la puerta. Tal vez el año entrante. Ahora no. Me dijo que era una muñeca muy bonita. We don't have much time left. We gotta wrap this up. Oh, she's gonna check the door. And what do you know? Whoa! There's another kid! Yeah, Carissa, if we, if we do another Mexican movie, we need to stick to action flicks. And we need to have a Spanish-speaking co-host. That would help a lot. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you crossed yourself. Miranda, yeah, you just arrived. We're at the last 60 seconds of the movie. Yeah, you're, you're super late. Adios, Santa Claus. Whoa! Whoa, Nelly! Y otra vez, como cada año, de regreso a su palacio. See, there's other castles up there. Who's li who lives in those other castles? Felices a los niños buenos. Yeah, Santa was well out of there. Blessed are those who believe, for they shall see God. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. This is in English. <laughs> yeah, Easter Bunny and the Great Pumpkin, Dr. Dweeb. Yeah. <laughs> Columbus. <laughs> oh, Columbus won the 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 match. <laughs> I was thinking Columbus lives in that castle. 
But yeah, this is in English. Merry Christmas. The end. Okay, that was, uh... That was really, uh... That was really miserable. Oh, uh, yeah. Huzzah! <laughs> this is, uh, this is Carissa. That was, uh... Wow, that was a chore. Ah... Uh. Uh, Dr. Dweeb says, boo, I was hoping the Sounders would win again. Okay, you guys are talking about something else. You guys not, aren't even talking about the movie anymore. Well, I I was barely keeping my eyes open through the whole movie. I'm, I'm dead tired, and I need to go. We're at $45. Anyone else who has uh, last-minute donations, please get them done. We, we have a $100 goal every weekend. We're at 45 We usually come in at about half of that goal. I want us to start getting up to the full 100 uh yeah Miranda says yeah we're talking soccer sorry um I think uh, if you go back and watch the video on demand Miranda I think you'll like the stuff that we watched at the beginning um if that's it for Santa Claus um I won't be showing that one again <laughs> we've unfortunately had had some had some bad movies uh recently the, the uh um but but this wow this made uh, this made the great Rupert look like Citizen Kane. <laughs> yeah, this was this was a struggle. This was a struggle. Probably the most I've struggled through a movie. Uh, the, this this whole year. Next weekend, I don't know what I'll show. Um, I'm gonna come up with something. Maybe I'll show. Uh, Miracle on 34th Street again with some uh with some short Christmas films. Um yeah, Ivory is that kind of movie where you're glad you can say you saw it but you never will again. Yeah, we we got the t-shirt. I'm glad you're still here, Ivory. I'm glad you didn't uh, nod off. Um but uh yeah, I'll be back uh Next uh, next Friday morning with another Science Friday, and then next Saturday morning with uh, Mike, we'll have we'll have a last gasp of some Christmas specials. We decided we're going to show some good Christmas specials. We'll show some good stuff. Um, this morning's cr bad Christmas specials were were bad. They were really bad. Um, and Doctor Dweeb is saying, "Go get some sleep." I will. Yeah, I'll, I'll be dead asleep as soon as I turn off the camera. Um, and then uh, next Saturday evening. I think yeah, I'm gonna decide right now. I'll show the I'll show the hour long T V version of uh, uh Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street with some and I'll find a collection of uh Christmas short films to show. Um uh, and uh I'll see you all next week. Thank you all for watching. Glad you made it at the last second, Miranda. Glad you made it through uh Ivory. Carissa, Doctor Dweeb, Darth Wing, thank you for staying with us. And uh, good night.